Welcome to Real Physics. Maybe you know my series about great physicists, but I call this series Overhyped Physicists because simply you can't compare these guys with the founding fathers of physics. They might be technically brilliant scientists, but they are doing a totally different kind of science because we have a paradigm shift from investigating the deep questions to the high-tech sport physics transformed into after World War II. And Steven Weinberg was certainly one of the main proponents. There is one phrase I like in his books. The effort to understand the universe is one of the very few things that lifts human life a little above the level of farce and gives it some of the grace of tragedy. I like it because there is a certain humbleness in here, but the problem is uh, Weinberg wasn't at all a humble scientist. The, the kind of science he did was the ambitious brute force dedicated finding of some desired uh, particle or phenomenon. And that led to uh, several Nobel Prizes in the 1960s and 1970s. In this case for um, to Glashev, Salem and Weinberg for their contributions to the theory of the unified weak and electromagnetic interaction. Now let's get a little bit into this. All this is based on a scheme in an abstract space how to order elementary particles and I talked about this in my video about Murray Gell-Mann. The axis are called isospin and strangeness and basically uh, what isospin means that we don't understand beta decay, you know, back in the 1930s. What a strangeness means, we don't understand the time scales, okay? So if we ha you have, so to speak, uh, one axis, how much you don't understand one thing, and another axis, how much you don't underst understand the other thing, it's an entirely metaphoric uh, way of doing uh, science completely detached from reality, detached from uh, real things like uh, space, time and mass. Okay, so uh, physics was already in a mess here and uh, theoreticians were screaming for uh, neutral currents, weak neutral currents, so an enormous um, effort was undertaken to build these uh, instruments, in that case a huge bubble chamber called Gargamel was built uh, in the early 70s in CERN. They found some events and, and with interpretations you could find these so-called weak neutral currents, but as Andrew Pickering in his excellent book Constructing Quarks points out in detail, and he's a little bit ironic here. It's not transparent to the untrained eye, but nor is it to the trained eye. And there are indeed serious difficulties because you can't really distinguish neutrinos, uh, genuine neutrinos from those um, generated at the bubble chamber. So we have really a typical combination of theoretical wishful thinking, ambitious big science experiment that push technology to the limits with always huge noise in the background and then you have um, always a qualitative uh, interpretation nothing you can uh, you can really test with uh, a coincidence of numbers well and that's the kind of science uh, that is done unfortunately until today in high energy physics and um, there was one person who really understood this, the science philosopher Thomas Kuhn, and he talked about uh, paradigms and uh, anomalies and uh, crisis in, in physics. I mean, if you read this book, uh, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, it's immediately clear that particle physics and high energy physics was in a serious crisis already in the 1960s and 1970s. And, well, Weinberg criticized Thomas Kuhn in an article, the revolutions that didn't happen. I mean, of course, uh, revolutions need some time to happen. So, I really think that Weinberg did not understand 
the basics here how science evolves and how good physics requires simplicity not a mess of so many particles well what he did understand maybe was that uh, particle physics was uh, going into a crisis because accelerator costs were increased and he wrote this book about cosmology he moved over to another field the book is entitled the first three minutes which is already ridiculous because if you're honest you can't tell anything about uh, with certainty about the first minutes of the universe I mean you can grab some signals and even this is not always clean science but in any case it would date back to 380,000 years after the Big Bang and then but extrapolating back hours after the Big Bang and, and minutes after the Big Bang it's just ridiculous and uh, I like the comment of a famous astronomer Mike Disney from Cardiff University and he said as particle physics has become paralyzed by its asset calculating costs, many particle theorists have moved over into cosmology, wishfully thinking of the universe as the great accelerator in the sky. And I think uh, Weinberg was a typical representative of this kind of theorist. So even worse, um, I mean, we, we are really walking into fantasy land now. Not only theoreticians were extrapolating back to the first minutes, but also to the first hold your breath uh, 10 to the minus 35 seconds or something like that yeah I mean Alan Guth uh, developed in 1980 this uh, so-called theory of cosmic inflation and Steven Weinberg was happy with that I mean that's that's not science by any reasonable measure any longer and uh, there were a few people and all uh, you have this stuff with multiverses and what, hap what happened before the Big Bang and all this stuff and uh, parallel universes and, and there are still scientists who have a, a sober attitude towards this, this um, absurdities. Roger Penrose uh, in his book The Road to Reality wrote since I believe that there are powerful reasons for doubting the very basis of inflationary cosmology, I should not refrain from presenting these reasons to the reader. I mean, I think Roger Penrose is a British gentleman who wanted to say this is nonsense. And uh, Martin Rees recounts that privately he was even more outspoken and he said uh, inflation is a fashion high energy physicists visited on cosmology even artworks think their offspring are beautiful so uh, yeah but seriously uh, physics was in a, in a in a crisis here and uh, but uh, Weinberg moved on and even justified the fantasies of string theory they, they, they didn't even have a remote um, connection to experiments or observations they were just uh, mathematical constructions in 11 or 26 dimensions and uh, well but Weinberg I mean he's he's not one of the most enthusiastic uh, string adherents but he says maybe maybe this maybe that um, I don't think he has a, a, a clear picture how the laws of nature are formed and uh, interestingly his book uh, triggered a certain reaction from a very intelligent guy Demis Hassabis and uh, he said in London uh, 2018 as a teenager I read books like Dreams of a Final Theory by Stephen Weinberg <laughs> obviously to his disappointment and he concluded I thought maybe physics needs some more intellectual horsepower which uh, brought him to uh, the field of neuroscience and artificial intelligence I think that's certainly more promising that uh, high-energy physics at the moment well um, 
to conclude, uh, Weinberg was certainly one of the key architects of the so-called standard model of particle physics. And uh, look at this mess. I mean, it involves uh, dozens of unexplained parameters. And, and Weinberg was always one who encouraged tinkering with a model, adding up ad hoc parameters when the problem showed up. And this is not, this is not the way good science uh, has to be done. Uh, if you like more details, I, uh, you can look up my book, uh, The Higgs Type, a little provocative, the title, and also my book, uh, Bankrupting Physics. But I seriously think um, that if you want to tackle the real unsolved problems of physics, you have to go back to, say, 1930 and deal with the riddles that bothered Einstein, Bohr, and Dirac, and Schrödinger, and those people. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, and if you're interested in real fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.